Would you believe me if I told you that 40% of all websites actually run on WordPress? Well, according to W3 Tech, that actually is the case. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to set up a WordPress site on Google Cloud Platform, set up SSL, and point your custom domain to that WordPress site. Anyways, guys, let's get started. No. So the first thing I'm going to do is navigate over to the marketplace and we are going to use the WordPress one click deployment VM. And then you scroll down. It is number two under virtual machines. So I'm just going to select this and then I'm going to go ahead and select launch, which is going to spin up that VM. So I'm just going to provide an email address, Tim at Tim.com. It doesn't have to be a real email. That's just going to be your WordPress login username. We just need to make sure that we have traffic enabled over HTTP and we do. Um, take note of the zone because we're going to have to um, accommodate for that based on our, our instance group. So US Central 1A, that looks good. Let's click deploy. So this should take a minute or two to spin up. But over here on the right, you can see it gives us all the URLs and login credentials for the stack that supports WordPress. So MySQL and the WordPress admin and that sort of thing. So in a new tab, I'm going to open up Compute Engine VM instances, and we should show we should see this showing up here. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to take note of the public IP address. So we can see it looks like it's ready to go. I'm going to copy the public IP and I'm just going to navigate to it to make sure that I'm seeing what I expect here. And I do. This is a WordPress site. This is kind of like the blog template. So this is fine. Um, so now we want to get working on the domain and the SSL. So the first thing we're going to do is let's create an instance group. We're going to create a load balancer that um, fronts the traffic over SSL and then terminates SSL and proxies it to the backend compute engine instance. But you can't proxy directly to a single compute engine instance. You have to proxy to an instance group. So we're going to go ahead and go to instance groups. We're, we're going to select create instance group and we want unmanaged. If we select these other two options, it's not going to work. So we're going to do unmanaged. We're going to do instance group two, and then we want to make sure that it's in the same zone here. And then we'll go ahead and add our VM instance into this group and we should be good to go. Okay. So now we want to set up our load balancer. So we're going to go over to network services. We're going to go to create load balancer. We want an HTTPS load balancer. We want from internet to VM. And there's a couple different components here. And this wizard is just going to walk you through each of them. So let's call this demo WordPress SSL. And then for the backend configuration, this is stating where are we going to proxy traffic to? In our instance, we want to send it to the instance group. So we're going to do backend services. And then we're going to do create a backend service. We're going to call this WordPress demo instance group and we're going to leave the protocol HTTP because the load balancer will handle the SSL with the clients with the browser and then it will terminate SSL and proxy it to the back end over HTTP. This just makes our life a whole lot easier. For the back end itself, we're going to select WordPress instance group. That's the instance group that we just um, set up. The named port is going to be port 80. It's kind of confusing that we did. Actually, let's just, both of these would work, but let's do HTTP port 80 because that's kind of more intuitive. And then there's a bunch of other configuration options here, nothing that we need to concern ourselves with. And then we need to create a health check. A health check is just a route on your backend that will return a, either a status code or a body that indicates that the back end is responding to traffic. And this allows the load balancer to ping the back end and kind of know at any given time if the back end is up or down. And then like if it's down, it could implement some additional logic to redirect or provide a error message or something like that. So let's call this um, health check two. And we're gonna keep this super easy. We're just gonna say, issue a request to the back end over HTTP to forward slash. So all this is saying is the health check is um, to request the home page. 
and if uh, the server responds, we consider the backend healthy. So we will save that, and then we will select create here, and then we just need to set up the front end configuration. So I'm gonna call this WordPress demo front end. This is where SSL comes into play. So now, this is, uh, we want to select HTTPS. We need to reserve a static IP address. So we're going to do create IP address. We're going to call this WordPress demo static IP. And then we have port 443 selected. That's good. Um, and then this is uh, where we point to a um, SSL certificate. We're going to do create new certificate. And then we're going to do Google Manage Certificate. So Google just takes care of that SSL certificate. So let's call this WordPress Demo SSL Cert. You do have to specify the domains you expect to be handled by the um, certificate because SSL certificates are mapped to domains. In this case, my domain is MacGyver.website. So I'm just going to add that in. And I'm going to do create and everything else looks good here. Let's select done. Let's go to review and finalize. All looks good. Let's go to create. And that's just going to take a second to spin up. By the way, guys, if you have questions, throw them in the comments. I do answer every comment. So we have a load balancer, but now we need to set up some DNS records. So when uh, a request gets proxied to GCP, GCP knows to send it to our load balancer. So we're gonna go over to Cloud DNS. We're gonna to go to Create Zone. We're gonna call this WordPress Demo SSL. And then we're just gonna put our, uh, our domain in here again. So MacGyver.website. And then we're just gonna select Create. So this is gonna spit out a bunch of uh, records. And one of them is gonna be the name servers. And this is what we're gonna be using to indicate to our domain registrar that they should send the traffic to GCP. So I'm gonna come over to Namecheap, which is where I purchased my domain. This is my domain right here. We're gonna to go to Manage. And then there should be a section around DNS. There is. I think it was previously selected uh, as basic DNS. I went ahead and toggled to custom DMS, DNS. And then I just, I just supplied the, um, the four name servers that were created by our DNS zone here. This will be the first um, the first hop for the traffic. It will come to the domain registrar. The domain registrar will send it to Google Cloud Platform. Now, once it gets to Google Cloud Platform in this DNS here, we need to do something with it. So we set up an A record. So we're gonna go to add record set. A is gonna be selected by default. Just because I want this to propagate as quickly as possible, we're going to do one second for TTL. We can leave the domain as is. I'm not looking to append any sort of subdomain or anything like that. Now, IP address. So this is asking where do we send the traffic once it's within the confines of GCP. So the answer to that is we want to send it to our load balancer, our front end IP on the load balancer. So let me just go back over to load balancer. Um, so this was our load balancer here. And I'm just taking a look at it. Oh, okay, and this is the front end IP address. We're gonna omit the protocol there and just grab the IP address. And we're gonna punch that in here. We're gonna go to create item. So now when the um, request comes into our DNS zone here, it's going to proxy to our load balancer. And then our load balancer is going to handle SSL authentication and proxy to the back end. One little note to keep in mind is when you first set up the load balancer, I think it takes about 30 minutes for this certificate to uh, go from provisioning to active. So just keep that in mind. If things don't work right away, just check out this here to make sure that it is in fact active. Um, but ours is active. So we should be good to go ahead and try to request our website. So. Um, I'm going to do an incognito window. Basically, one of the issues here is um, uh, DNS propagation. So it might take you know, several minutes to several hours to potentially a day for everything to uh, update and be reflected properly. There are ways to kind of uh, purge uh, your, your DNS. Um, one way is to use an incognito window. That helps. But another way is to, um, to go into the terminal and actually flush your DNS. You can do that on a Windows or a Mac, and that will help as well. 
So we're going to go to our domain now, see if we can't get this to show up. So we're getting this odd behavior here, and this is somewhat to be expected. Basically what's happening is if we look at like the markup of the page, it's issuing requests for content by IP address, and it's also omitting uh, the protocol HTTPS. So we're not getting, although we are getting um, uh, SSL at the domain layer, the markup on the page is referencing HTTP. And basically browsers call this a mixed content uh, error. And basically, um, if the site is loaded over HTTPS, but any asset is loaded over HTTP, then it's really not secure because that asset's not secure and it could inject code or it can inject anything. So it kind of throws an error into everything. So what we need to do is on the WordPress side, we need to swap out the protocol on these links uh, from HTTP to HTTPS. We also need to update these domains from IP addresses to the actual domain name. This is fine. Um, the domain stuff looks good. We just need to update WordPress to get it working. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go over to our VM instances here, and we can still access WordPress uh, by IP. So if I throw the IP in there and then I add on uh, WordPress admin, I should be able to log in. If you forget your credentials, we can go back over to GCP, and then we can go to deployment manager. Then it should be listed here. Okay, my username was tim at tim.com. And then I'm going to copy my password. So tim at tim.com. We essentially, we need to use a plugin to update all these links. Again, I don't know why it's not supported natively, but it is what it is. So we're gonna come over to plugins. We will search for, I think it's called like SSL content fixer. Uh, let's see here. Oops. Um, so search for plugins. And this is the one I've used. Uh, so it's called SSL Insecure Content Fixer. We'll just click install. And then we're going to click activate. And what that's going to give us is if we come over settings, we're now going to have a new tab here, SSL Insecure Content. And what we want here is the setting at the bottom, load balancer, reverse proxy, nginx, that's us. So we're going to go ahead and select this. And what this is doing is it's going through the markup of all the pages and it's replacing HTTP with HTTPS, which is what we want. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And then let's see if we can't get um, the site to reflect that. So I'm going to clear this out and reload the site. So this actually looks better. So like these are the assets and you can see now they're loaded over HTTPS. So this is good. The one outstanding issue is we're still calling the IP address. And our SSL certificate, remember how we added the domain to it? It, it can't be mapped to an IP address. It can only be mapped to a domain. So this link here and all the links in the, um, in the uh, markup of the page, these need to uh, reference the domain, not the IP address. So to get that to work, all we have to do is back in the admin here, we're going to go to general and we're going to update these to include our domain. But we're going to keep the HTTP actually. Um, and the reason we do that is because again, we're doing termination at the load balancer, SSL termination at the load balancer. So when it hits the back end, when it hits WordPress, it's actually HTTP. So we swap out these two URLs here. We click save. And if you have the developer tools open, you can right click the refresh button and you can do empty cache hard reload. That helps us uh, in situations like this. Um, so now if we go over to the network tab and if we observe the resources being requested, those were the old ones, um, the new ones, we have this new schema in place, right? With the right protocol, the right domain name, same path and everything looks good to me. Should still be able to do MacGyver.website forward slash uh, WordPress login. Yeah, and we can do that. So now everything's good. We are secured over SSL. All the assets are, are requesting um, proper protocol and proper domain. So at this time, we are good to go. And that's it. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. And thanks for listening.